Okay, and welcome to week one of Puppy Day School with Fitz. Uh, he has such a great temperament, lots of enthusiasm, as we've discussed. I think our biggest hurdle right now is curtailing the jumping, the counter surfing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to do a segment um, in a few minutes that's going to discuss ways to actively uh, train a dog to be more apt to want to stay on the ground. We're going to do a little segment inside which discusses counter surfing, sort of similar techniques. Um, but in addition to that, we work our first week on what we call foundation games. So foundation games are exactly what they sound like. They are the foundation for all our training. Name game. Name game means I say your name, you stop what you're doing, and you look at me, and you move towards me to find out what's next. So it's a stop, look, and listen cue, and it is the foundation for come when called. It's the foundation for our recall, but really for everything we do. We need a dog to be as distracted as they want to be, but be able to stop what they're doing and focus when they hear their name. So first rule is when we have food, rewards, we don't hold them out in front of our body. We keep them behind so a dog can't read our body language and decide if we have cookies or not. Um, and wait till the dog is not looking at us. Bits. Yes. And then all I'm looking for is eye contact. A head turn, eye contact. Yeah, he says, I know you got cookies. So if a dog already figures out I've got food, Fitz, yes. Okay, I'm, he moved towards me. I'm really looking for the dog to make eye contact with me. Um, he tends to want to look for food. Fitz, yes. So I'm kind of, yes. I'm kind of in a little bit of a tricky situation with him because Fitz, yes. I don't want him to be staring at my hands. Um, I want him to give me eye contact. So, but I also want to reward him when he does turn and pay attention to me. So I've been building a little bit this week on having that eye contact um, in different ways. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. One of the things I've been working on is simply holding the treat out and waiting for the dog without any cues to, to look at me. And a lot of puppy training is figuring out what the heck are you trying to get at? Yes. So all I'm looking for right now is for him to look away from the rewards and pay attention to me, not jump. So I'm gonna do a couple treats on the ground so he's not jumping. He's got a treat stuck in him. It's yes, good job. Yes, good job. So a lot of puppy training is just them. Yes, good job. A lot of puppy training is just a dog figuring out a how to have self control and b how what is it we're looking for. So if you notice, I tend to not use a lot of cues, a lot of words in the beginning because. It just, it makes the process of them trying to figure things out a little bit more difficult because we're saying things, they're trying to think. It would be like if you were trying to do an addition problem and somebody kept yelling out things to you. You're trying to think and somebody keeps yelling out numbers. It, we will add cues, words, that are paired with behaviors after we have, the dog has an idea of really what it is we're looking for. What does that behavior look like? Um, so, Name game, really important um, to also not, when we're practicing, repeat the dog's name. So um, if the dog is not successful, so if I were to put that down there, Fitz, yes, good job. If he were not to look at me when I did that, I would figure out how to make it easier. Do I need to remove more distraction? Do I need to um, make the distance between us shorter? Those are ways that I could make it easier, but I don't want to get in the habit of repeating the dog's name. Fitz, 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 and then he looks at me at the third time and he gets a cookie. Oh, thank you for lying down. I'm also gonna um, really try to reward for behaviors that the dog offers that I like. So I'm standing here with treats. He pops into a down. I didn't ask for it, but he's gonna get lots of cookies for behaviors that I want to have him continue doing. 
So let's just go back really quick. We're gonna jump forward again to that. Hi. It's yay! Boom. Treats go to the ground. Um, and obviously when he knows what's expected of him, when he's not super amped up, this is gonna be easier, but we're gonna keep building that skill so that even when he is really excited, he's gonna not have his first, uh, his first reaction to jump. We're really gonna work on that over the next couple of weeks. So one of the techniques that we use, um, hi, 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 oh there you go. One of the techniques that we use is to, um, Create a scenario where the ground is more valuable than the jumping up. For a dog like this that's already at four months, has a really deep history of being rewarded for jumping, and you might say, why, I've been saying no off, you know, making the dog sit, all that kind of stuff. The reality is, if, um, the reality is if the dog continues to do a behavior, it is finding reward in it somehow. For, um, okay, so, so what I really want to do is, hi, I want to continue to have the dog approach me and put rewards on the ground so that as a dog runs up, they're more apt to focus on the ground rather than up. My timing has to be really good. What just happened there where the dog jumped first and then I put a treat, that wasn't great timing. Um, so we need to work on that a little bit. Um, hello! And I wanna make sure that I'm not asking the dog to do anything. I don't want the dog to learn to approach and need to hear a cue like sit um, because that's just, that's not, going to help the dog create good habits out of muscle memory. They're going to really, if we're always asking for a sit, that's something that if then we don't, the dog doesn't hear it, they're going to apt, they're going to be more apt to jump. Hi, come here. Hello. So as the dog speeds over, the treats on the ground. Do it again. Robin! Hi! Hello! So let's hide! Come on! All right, now we've moved inside, uh, and the concepts are very similar of how we work on this. Make the ground the more valuable place. Try to eliminate as much as we can of, um, Temptations, we wanna to try to keep these counters as clean as possible when we're working on this so that the dog never gets anything, steals anything off of the counter at all. Um, so let's move to me like pretending I'm getting some dog food ready. Oh, this is so hard, right? So hard. But look, fish is old, this is old, this is so good. I know what to do here. Good job. I'm going to keep always rewarding on the ground as, uh, hey, dog starts to jump up. I'm going to really be pretty firm about um, correcting him. I may even, let's see if I do this again, what that might look like. I'm egging him on to do this. I'm going to give him some space to make a mistake. Okay, I might grab him by the scruff and pull him down. Uh-uh, no way, man, that's not cool. All right, be firm. He's got, we've got to kind of, you know, when the mistakes happen, especially inside, I want to be really firm with that dog. This is not an okay behavior, and it's going to get harder and harder the bigger he gets to correct. Um, so, yeah, there's good things up here, but better things down here, okay? more accessible things down here. Yeah, good job. Very good. Now, if I put a bunch of things up on the counter there. Yes, though, that was great, okay? 
He really wanted to jump up there, barked at it, but didn't. He's going to get tons of rewards on the ground, okay? It is way more efficient to train a different behavior, an alternate behavior, than get a dog to stop doing something. So this is a case of training him to not jump is a lot harder than training him to love to stay on the ground because good things happen. Okay. Very good. Good job. All right. So keep at it. When mistakes happen, try to minimize them. Um, be firm about it. And again, we're working on really having this ground be the place that is super de duper uh, value. All right. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week for week two.